Welcome to the Retail Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Darius Busafi, and today I'm speaking with Philip Robb, president and founder of a company called Beta. How are you today? I'm good, Darius. Thank you. Fantastic. What is Beta, and how did the team actually come up with this idea? Yeah, so think of Beta as a, a retail as a service. What we do is we offer a service, a service to makers uh, who uh, do not have a physical retail presence today or very limited uh, physical retail presence and are, are looking to bring uh, their products uh, to market in a new uh, and unique way. You know, the idea really is being a kind of a maker centric products to launch uh, in the physical world. Um, if you go into our stores, uh, it's really about having that tactile experience where consumers can come in, touch, feel the products, everything's out of box. You can um, learn about the products kind of at your own pace. Uh, so we have uh, our beta testers, which uh, are uh, generally can refer to in the industry as sales associates, who would um, kind of walk you through, get a, get a sense of uh, your understanding and the needs um, uh, and your interests and, and kind of can you know, curate an experience as they kind of walk you through the store. Um, but the idea really is, uh, like I said, it's about kind of giving the makers the opportunity to um, control their experience within kind of a retail environment. Uh, so each product is out of box. It has a digital display next to it. Um, within that digital display, there's brief descriptions about the product. There's videos about the product. Um, and so really the thinking behind it was that myself and my co-founders, we were previously uh, at Nest. Um, and have a um, just a, a background in consumer electronics uh, and hardware, and um, you know we wanted to build an experience that uh, you know we felt really matched um, the need of, of most makers out there, whether that be consumer electronics or whether it be you know more broadly, um, uh, I'd say just new and innovative products that are trying to launch into the marketplace. All right, that's very interesting. I mean, of course. I'm sure everybody probably has heard about the other side of the maker marketplaces like, you know, Kickstarter and Indiegogo. So you're actually taking that model to the physical retail almost, right? Yeah, it's it's not necessarily even about, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, platforms like Indiegogo and, and Kickstarter, um, you know, they allow companies to, to get um, funding. Uh, you know, for us, it's about, you know, Post funding. So once you actually have a physical product, um, how do you then market that? How do you uh, build and gain awareness? How do you uh, potentially get more information about how consumers are thinking about your products? Um, you know what happens is that very often these companies will will launch into um, you know uh, either will you know set up a Shopify account and, and start selling their products uh, online. Um, but the problem is, is that, you know, the, the awareness level uh, is very low. You know, you also don't get an understanding truly of a product. So you may have something that's really unique, uh, you know, a product that could be a couple hundred, even a couple thousand dollars. But in, until the consumer has the opportunity to, to see and, and feel that product in, in real life, it's really hard um, for them to kind of grasp, uh, you know, the value of, of those goods. And so what we felt like it was just really important is to provide a, um, a platform where there's you know, that service to these companies. Um, and so the, our business model is, is very unique in the sense that we don't make money off of the sale of the good. Uh, so a, a maker would keep 100% of everything that was sold uh, within our stores. They're simply just paying f uh, a flat rate that, uh, for the services of being in the stores, as well as you know, capturing all of the data and analytics um, that, that we're able to provide them in the physical world, uh, similar to what they would get uh, you know, if they sold their products online. To compare with the traditional model of retail, anybody that wanted to create a physical product, they would have to create it, they would have to build some samples of it. And Correct. then try to sell it to either distributors or fine chains or somebody, some retail stores that actually would sell it. That's correct. What um, this model is changing, I mean, even starting from Kickstarter, for example, you can actually get funding for a product before you can even build it. Then let's go, let's say you go through the Kickstarter process, you get funding, you might build a, a few thousand and you send it to people. And then you can take it to beta where you would get like first-hand experience, probably a more controlled test. Yeah, absolutely. 
as you mentioned, our, our model is, is very different than kind of the traditional wholesale model, uh, whereby, uh, you know, once you have a physical product, um, you will then go and, and like I said, either sell it uh, or work with a, a rep firm uh, distributor or potentially directly with a retailer. And, you know, that process is very arduous, uh, especially to maybe a young maker um, who's trying to get their products uh, you know, into, into retail. You, you don't necessarily understand that there's a lot of um, it's not as simple as you know, reaching out to a buyer uh, and a buyer purchasing that product and, and putting it on shelf. You know, that it could take months, um, you know, almost maybe up to a year in some cases to get your product in, into physical retail. Uh, in addition, there's it's very costly. So what ends up happening is imagine, you know, you go in and you think it's just as simple as selling your, your product to a maker and then they mark it up at a wholesale uh, price to the end consumer. Uh, what you don't realize is that there's all of these other costs associated with it. You have to ensure that somebody's going to come in and, and make sure that your product is, is properly inventory. Uh, uh, merchandise that you've got the right amount of inventory on shelf all of these things you have to go out and pay you know third party companies to do and it just can become very expensive and there's a lot of hidden costs that, that most makers are, are unaware of and with beta you know the idea is you know you, sh you shouldn't have to go through those that process we think that through the usage of so software and technology you should be able to sign up for a product um, and you know quickly uh, be able to bring that product into market, you know, on our platform, on our website. Um, and from there, be able to sell your products. You know, we can have, you can put the set up a product within, uh, in about in less than a month and, you know, have your product available to consumers where they can start to, uh, you know, discover your product. You can start to change, you know, your marketing messaging, uh, in, in real time on our digital displays. In fact, you can even play around with pricing. You can do A-B test you know, pricing to, to really get a true read. Mm -hmm. And these are all things you just can't do today uh, in retail. And so it's really empowering the maker uh, to, to have you know, greater control uh, over the whole kind of uh, channel and experience. So it seems like what you're doing is you're almost bringing a part of the advantages of online commerce, which is like fast iteration and response from the market. Which is not possible, really, in in you know retail anywhere right now. You're trying to bring that into retail to physical retail, which is pretty interesting. Uh, that's correct. We've you know, really like to say that we kind of reverse engineer the kind of physical space uh, to be more like the online space by using, I think, uh, technology and software in creating this this platform. It allows you to have, I think, the, the advantages both of the online experience where you can make very quick changes, you can bring products to market faster, you can uh, adapt your, your messaging, your pricing. Um, those are things that, that we can do, but then you also get the benefits of the physical kind of space that you just don't get um, online. And that's the, the challenge with online is that, you know, in order, you know, people don't always feel comfortable, um, especially something they've never seen before. Uh, maybe it's a little bit of a higher price point of just going in and, and ordering and, you know, spending a couple hundreds, couple thousand dollars on something and they want to kind of test and, and, and be able to kind of touch and feel it first. When did you start the uh, company? Uh, so the company, um, we founded uh, the company in uh, in early, to, in May of 2015 and uh, the first uh, retail store opened in December of 2015. The company, I'm assuming, is uh, probably funded by outside investors. Yes, we do have uh, investors. So it was myself and my, my three co-founders. We were previously at Nest, but we also do have you know, okay. investors that, that came on. Uh, so we've raised our uh, series up to a series A at this point. Okay. Um, so I'm interested to, to hear what investors thought about the concept. Yeah. I mean, look, it, at first I would, I would say that, you know, when we first started the company a couple of years ago, I think retail was uh, an area where he, not a lot of investors really wanted to uh, get involved. Um, you know, there were a lot of challenges uh, within kind of the retail space, you know, for a variety of reasons. It wasn't something that people were really spending and thinking a lot about. But, you know, I would say within the last couple of years, all of a sudden it's become um, a lot more heightened around that there's opportunities. And you start to see, you know, um, a lot more kind of direct consumer brands coming into uh, and opening physical retail stores. So all of a sudden, you know, what became what uh, years ago was not an attractive space uh, really has evolved. And, you know, when we first went out there, it was definitely challenging um, getting people excited about, you know, uh, a kind of a, a retail startup. Um, but, you know, I would say that that is starting to shift a lot uh, over the last three years 
uh, with the emergence of um, a lot of, like I said, a lot of direct to consumer brands now starting to open up their stores. Uh, for example, just in um, San Francisco, where uh, uh, we have a flagship store in uh, the Hayes Valley neighborhood, you know, on our block alone, you've got um, companies like Warby Parker, uh, Away, uh, which is a suitcase um, company, um, Outdoor Voices. Uh, so there's, you know, a handful of direct to consumer brands who are kind of opening new retail shops just on the on the on our block alone. So it's it's really kind of changing, I think, the dynamic of the way investors are thinking about uh, the retail space. Right, right. And of course, the fact that uh, Amazon is getting into physical retail and even Alibaba in China, you know, JD, yeah. all, all of them, it pretty much answers that question. Is physical retail even important? There are not a lot of uh, investors, VCs that focus on retail and especially retail, I'm always interested to learn of them. And, you know, yeah. we, we need more. We definitely don't have our fair share. Yeah, you know, what we found is, is uh, you know, many of our investors um, are actually uh, more on the retail, excuse me, more on the real estate side than they are on the retail side per se. Um, because I think a lot of individuals in, in real estate understand the importance, right? You see the emergence of what's happened with WeWork and the office space. Right. You know, here was... Um, something that was kind of dying out uh, and, you know, um, commercial rates uh, were, were dropping. And then all of a sudden, re WeWork comes in and reinvigorates kind of the, the office space. Um, and so we think that, again, retail is, is in a similar um, uh, kind of juxtaposition in that, you know, there's this opportunity to really change the way that retail um, and the model of retail. So, you know, for us, fundamentally, we think that the wholesale model isn't going to look the same way it does, you know, five or, you know, 10 years down the road. Um, it's, it's, it's changing and in, in understanding that, that it's about advertising and building awareness for products just as much as it is about selling products. Because ultimately, the consumer is going to decide where to shop and how they want to shop and what's convenient for them. And maybe it's not that physical moment. So having a sales associate who's trying to convert or kind of push a sale in the moment isn't necessarily the right way to do it. It's about, you know, it's it's around an, an understanding kind of ultimately what is that attribution. So if I walk into a store, you know, I may have purchase intent. I just maybe don't want to walk home with that product right now because I'm on the way, you know, to go elsewhere and I don't want to lug the product around or, you know, I'm going to dinner later that night. But really the phys the actual sale in itself or the interest occurred at the physical point of um, uh, in that retail shop. And so that's through the beauty of, of the model and where we think the model is headed. It's less about, you know, that moment in time of where you actually purchase the product from. It's more about how did you learn about the product and what caused you to want to purchase that product. Right, right. So uh, the, you actually have about, what, 75 stores right now? We operate uh, 79 locations. Uh, so we have nine. nine beta flagship stores. Um uh, and we have 70 shop and shops inside of Lowe's, um, home improvement stores. Uh, and then uh, we'll be uh, you know, announcing shortly um, you know, that we'll be uh, ex continuing to expand our, our beta uh, store presence. Okay, so that's the difference between flagship store is your own operated store and uh, you actually have a, uh, an agreement with Lowe's. We're, so I have a couple of Lowe's close to me. Um, I'm, I'm going to go check them out. Uh, well, you don't have them in all the lows, of course. They have thousands of stores, but... Correct. Yeah, we're in 70 locations uh, spread throughout the country. Uh, you mentioned that you're in Orange County. Um, there is one in Elisa Viejo uh, that we have. So you should be able to kind of check out uh, check out that spot. That was actually one of our three pilot stores that we t originally tested with Lowe's. Um, we started off with a three-store pilot, and um, uh, we're really... Uh, both us and Lowe's were pleased, I think, with the results. Uh, and then this past year, um, we expanded into you know 67 additional locations, and today we have 70 stores uh, throughout the throughout the U.S. How do mm -hmm. you how do you get customers to come into the store? We've been able to build a lot of kind of word of mouth uh, excitement uh, about kind of what we're doing, you know, having new products. But you know, at the end of the day, it's it's two I think two things uh, have been able to um, why we've been able to kind of generate a lot of traffic in our stores. One is you know we've put our stores in very high traffic locations, building them in kind of what we kind of call high street, uh, whether that be in downtown Palo Alto or whether that be in Hayes Valley in San Francisco, where there's a lot of natural foot traffic. Additionally, we We've uh, you know put our stores in top uh, lifestyle centers and malls throughout the throughout the U.S. 
Uh, again, you know, places where we feel that there's kind of a, a really strong kind of connection between beta, the type of products we carry, and kind of end consumers. Um, and then lastly, the other thing that we've been able to do uh, is working very closely with our partners. And our partners, again, because they're keeping 100% of the sales, because really they take the ownership of the space, they're generating and driving and pushing traffic uh, to our stores so people can come in and check out their products. Um, you know, we have companies uh, that will, you know, like Boosted Board that hosts you know events for people to come in and and check out and ride their uh, electric skateboards. Or uh, we work with a company called Rad Power Bikes, uh, and they um, really use Beta as a showroom or an opportunity uh, for you to. Um, if you go onto their site, you can find where our locations are, and then you can set up an appointment and come in and, and you know get on uh, you know an electric bike, uh, and then you know. Same same type of thing, you know. We work with uh, a furniture company called Burrow, where they'll they'll generate traffic and send people to come check out a sofa because they don't have showrooms of their own. So you know, when you have brands who have are excited uh, and have a very engaged kind of um, customer base, we partner work with them on how we generate traffic and kind of really be a benefit together. And that's the difference of when you have a partnership versus you know just creating a transactional relationship um, with you know between a, a retailer and a maker. That's also a part of word of mouth, of course. And location traditionally has been a key part of retail success. And it seems like that's not going away. That's still very important. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very fundamental thinking and our approach is, is putting stores where um, obviously where there are people, uh, but then you have to have an exciting experience as well. And so, you know, we put a lot of thought into the design of the stores, the layout of the stores, so that when you walk by that you're really pulled into, um, pulled into them uh, and feel like there's an, something unique and engaging. Uh, you very rarely uh, do and then also, because our stores then can generate a lot of traffic, you'll see a lot of other people who kind of have that whole kind of uh, you know feeling of FOMO uh, when right. their store is really filled and they have no idea what the store is. Uh, but we, have, we, you know, our probably most popular question uh, that, that people ask when they come in is, uh, um, what is this place? And, and honestly, it's the, it's the question we love the most because it really gives us an opportunity to engage and, and tell you know customers uh, you know who we are and, and what we're all about. I'm so happy to see like a, the startup mentality applied to retail in this in this way because all of the quote unquote innovation that I hear about is directly from like people in retail, which is good and is needed. But sometimes the best ideas come from outsiders. I mean, not total outsiders, but like people yeah. that are not saddled with that the experience of the past. Yeah, we have very little people on staff that have retail experience. Uh, myself and, and, and a handful of others have retail experience. And, and even those that do, you know, primarily were even uh, a lot of them were at Apple uh, on the retail side um, you know, early on. So you know, our thinking definitely, as you mentioned, is, is not um, kind of coming at it with that, that traditional retail sense. And, you know, because of it, I think we, you know, we aren't, we don't come with those kind of preconceived notions of what it, it should be. Uh, and even at times, um, you know, when, when there is that kind of thinking internally, you know, we always ask ourselves a question of, well, well, why? And, you know, if the, if the answer is, well, you know, that's just kind of how it is, or that's how it's done, you know, we will kind of debunk that and, and really challenge one another to, to say no. Like if that's just because that, that's the way it's always been done in this industry, this is this is what's gotten us to where we're at today. We need to be thinking much differently about it um, and, and figuring out solutions. Um, and so that's why, you know, my one of my co-founders is, you know, a software engineer um, and, uh, you know, he you know that it really brings that thinking to the table and and I love it because he challenges me uh, and he challenges everyone in the organization to to really kind of think about things and how can technology improve the experience uh, and, and it's just yeah it's really kind of in the DNA and of who we are yeah I mean that's the that's the thought process of questioning everything just because we've done it for a thousand years that doesn't mean we can't question it you know right yeah yeah I love that mentality. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I call day one mentality <laughs> every yeah, day uh, you question everything you even question yourself you, yeah. you know, question your best performing products or processes question them continue yeah. questioning them completely I mean somebody asked a question one time um, you know internally was uh, if they asked if 
a tool or something that we used was a sacred cow. And I said, absolutely not. You know, there's no sacred cows in this organization. Um, there's just, there's nothing that, you know, we, and if you think like that, um, then you're not going to continue to innovate and evolve. And, and, um, and that's, you know, as an organization, um, you know, culturally, that's, that's how we think about everything. Let's talk a little bit about the technology that's used inside the store. Yeah. So there's a, uh, we have technology incorporated in, in, uh, I'll kind of break it down in like three different ways. So the first piece is you know, how the how brands engage with beta on onboarding and getting their products set up and, and being able to market their products you know, ultimately to consumers. If you want to get started with us, I mean, you can basically do one of two things. You either can just go directly onto our um, portal and sign up and, and submit a product uh, that you have. Um, we do some very kind of small vetting uh, around that. Um, but you know, ultimately, as long as you know, we don't kind of find the product offensive. As long as it kind of fits within you know the general thinking of um, uh, the products that we carry, uh, and the product is ready for for market, you know, it's production ready. Um, you can you know, be selling your product you know within our stores, like I said, within within 30 days, uh, and you can go through that sign up flow. Um, and so that just makes it very simple. As long as there's you know space available, uh, you know, in a given store in in that month, um, you know, like I said, it's it's really easy for for um, for products to 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 onboard with us. And so that's again through the usage of technology. You don't have to go through a buyer, um, but if that's something you want to do and want to you know speak to somebody, obviously you know you can talk to somebody on our partnerships team. That's that's a, a service that's available. Um, so that's really the first piece. Um, once you're then in the portal. Uh, you can start, um, you know, you can go in and upload all of your own imagery. You can, uh, we've created a template, so it's really simple to do. It's kind of just a drag and drop. Um, you you uh, can, you know, import, uh, you know, how much inventory you're going to send us. Uh, it's a really just a it's a really simple process to to not only get started but to continue to manage and, and maintain. Then um, what ends up happening is the next step is once the product is in store, you know, what we do is uh, through the usage of um, camera technology, um, we can start to uh, measure uh, impressions, uh, product engagements, dwell times, um, dem like demos. Uh, and then ultimately sales. And so you can watch that happen is the whole conversion funnel of how many people walk into the store, how many people walk by your product, how many people engage with your product, how many people uh, had a demo done of your product with your product, and then how many people purchased your product. Uh, and that's all information that uh, we have dashboards that they get pushed out to our partners in real time. And that's something that you can uh, access for you know any of the stores, uh, both our flagship as well as the the Lowe's locations uh, that brands are in. Each product has kind of a zone. So you can see what's happening. Um, so the zones are all connected. So when somebody walks in, you know, it identifies uh, an individual like anonymously, but you know that it, that somebody has walked in. And then through that path can can you know plot where you go and where you go next. So did you look at you know the Sonos speaker? And if so, you know when you're done, did you go to you know the Quip toothbrush? And and it can walk you can can kind of take the path and the journey as you're going through uh, in the information that's happening in the engagement. So that's how it's kind of measuring uh, that you know all through kind of this anonymous journey. So you can actually track one individual shopper through their entire journey in the store? Yeah. And then the, the last piece that we have is uh, as an engagement tool is that m uh, makers can communicate and talk directly uh, with our um, with our sale, with the, the beta testers. And so the way that that happens is that a beta tester, so we use, uh, we have a couple of different um, tools that we use internally. Um, one a proprietary uh, application that we've built and then also um, through the usage of Slack, where as a maker can reach out and submit questions to a beta tester or to a particular store or a series of stores about you know maybe trends that you're seeing with your product. So you know, maybe all of a sudden you saw a huge influx of traffic uh, or engagements on your product, or you've seen sales uh, either increase or or decline over you know a period of time. Um, you maybe have a new product feature that you're rolling out and you want more questions on. So these are all things that we can start to track uh, and do, uh, perform uh, both qualitative and quantitative um, 
information. So you can have that direct line and direct channel. So there's nowhere else in, you know, where a maker who could be halfway across the world could be engaging and understanding what's exactly happening with their products you know, in a much deeper level than just you know, engagement data. Now, all of a sudden, you, know, you can understand uh, and, and, t- and have the uh, beta tester kind of craft uh, um, almost a... Um, uh, you know, a story so that you understand exactly what's happening uh, and then they will get that feedback. And if you're asking multiple stores, we'll aggregate it and send it to you all at once. Okay, great. So you don't actually sell anything in the store, right? No, that's and that, that's not true. And it's, it's, okay. a, it's a misnomer that we get all the time. We actually do carry inventory on probably about 85 to 90% of all the products that we carry. We don't make money off the sale of it, but at the but still the can um, the maker a lot of times still wants to be able to sell that product, uh, and they're keeping you know the sales from that. Uh, a lot of time on the larger products, and some of them I mentioned earlier, like uh, electric bikes or you know furniture, we don't carry inventory on, but uh, most of the goods that uh, are available. But again, it's ultimately up to the maker if they want to have their products available for sale. Um, we think it, help, it it makes for a better consumer experience at the end of the day, but it's ultimately um, up to the maker on how they want their products represented. And some of them choose to have a, more of a direct relationship with uh, with you know with the with the end user. Okay, and so you do have a POS system in the store. Correct. Right. Yep, we do. Um, yeah, well, it's a, it's it's a partnership. Uh, we use both uh, Vend and, and well, as well as PayPal. We don't have kind of like a cash wrap, so you would never go in and see, you know, like a traditional cash wrap you would see in a retail store. It, these are all done through kind of mobile processing. Client telling is another uh, application that I I think is very beneficial. It's like for people that come in, even if they don't buy something, do you capture any information from them or try to or yeah. offer? Uh- Absolutely. Um, We have a lot of repeat customers. Um, You know, we send out a monthly newsletter uh, that, um, you know, talks about all the new products, everything that's happening in our stores. And and we have a very high level of engagement um, through that newsletter. And and, um, but also we have a lot of repeat customers who will come in because people know that we have we care. we, We probably introduce, you know, on average about maybe 10 to 12 new products every month. So people are constantly coming back, you know, looking for that newness uh, that we uh, have in our, within our stores. How do you select products? What's what what kind of things do you look for when you're picking the product? Yeah, again, you know, as I mentioned earlier about how the technology works, we don't necessarily curate products um, per se. Uh, for us, it's really about having more of that kind of open platform, uh, and because um, we can bring products in very quickly, um, and through our technology, we also can uh, exit through those those products as well. So, um, and we have the data. And you know, if a company fi- feels they're not getting value or their product really isn't resonating with the consumer for a variety of reasons, they're not going to want to stay, nor are we going to necessarily want to keep those products. So, um, for us, it's it's letting the consumer ultimately decide. You know, we don't want to be in the job of being buyers. Mm-hmm. Um, now, we will sometimes curate a type of, you know, maybe categories, uh, and we're constantly testing things out. So, for example, as I mentioned, you know, we have furniture. Um, we have, like, personal care items, like, you know, toothbrushes and some some health and beauty products. We have uh, supplements now. Um, we uh, just uh, launched uh, an apparel brand uh, at the beginning of April. Um, so we carry a variety of different things because it's really around kind of the, the quest for that discovery of new and innovative products uh, and doesn't necessarily have to be relegated you know, to kind of consumer electronics, so to speak. It's not a big, huge uh, hurdle to jump o- over for, for makers to get their products in there. What do you think is going to be the future of retail? Five to ten years, you know, it's, I think you're probably a, a really good position to actually make a good prediction because of what you're doing. Even a couple years down the road, the landscape is going to change. It already is. You know, you have a lot of legacy retailers that that are that exist today, um, and as you, you know, see, uh, you know, constantly. I think I was just reading something like there's already like three thousand doors have been shuttered. You know, just in 2018 alone. You know, with obviously Toys R Us making a big chunk of that. You know, recently, um, and you're going to continue to see that. But it doesn't mean that retail is dead. Because at the same time, what you, you hear about all the companies that are closing, but you don't hear about all the companies that are opening stores and showrooms. Um, you know, maybe they're not doing it at the same alarming rate, uh, so they're not uh, 
but eventually that's going to catch up. I think you know these new new type of retailers, these direct to consumer brands, they understand the importance of retail, and you know we're working very closely, just announcing a, a new concept that we have uh, called Built by Beta, where we're going to be working with brands to to help them bring you know their products to market in in really you know in a new way. Um, and that's something that we're really excited about because, you know, we can bring all of our expertise, all of our knowledge and help brands uh, uh, do it, but mitigate a lot of the, I think, the, the liability and the risks that come along with that. So, um, you know, retail is, is evolving. It's physical retail is here to stay. Uh, it's just going to look different. And uh, we also think the business model is also going to look vastly different. Um and uh, the type of brands. So you're not going to necessarily have, uh, you know, the, the traditional um, brands that you, you see today, but uh, I think you're going to see brands that are embracing technology. And, you know, you know, fortunately, one of the things, you know, by beta starting at the time that it did, you know, we didn't come with a lot of the baggage. I think that, that you know, maybe a, a traditional retailer has to, you know, to overcome. Um, and, you know, we can kind of start fresh and really think about it, you know, uh, from, from a much different perspective. What are the plans for the rest of this year? Are basically growth or I mean you definitely are, are innovating on product as well like you, you the one you just mentioned the built by pro- yeah. data um yeah look we're going to continue to operate stores uh, our flagship stores will um, open more uh, you'll see some new kind of look and feel in the concepts and in the sizing we'll look at some smaller concepts we'll continue like I said to open you know new stores uh, we'll continue to work with retailers uh, in the same way that we're working with Lowe's today I think there's a lot of retailers that have approached us and and are I think you know, understand that they need to change and evolve. And, and, and you know, to, to their credit, uh, there's some uh, companies out there that, you know, understand um, the need uh, to to change and evolve their business model. So we're really excited for, for that. And you'll see more partnerships similar to kind of what we were doing uh, with Lowe's. And then um, I'd say lastly, uh, yeah, we're just, we're going to continue working with brands and, and, you know, we found with Built by Beta, you know, companies started by taking a couple of feet in our stores, but just wanted more. And you know, that's what we're going to be evolving to help help companies you know build their own uh, retail platforms. Thank you so much, uh, Phil. It was a uh, yeah, pleasure speaking with you, and look forward to hearing how things grow and expand. Yeah, Darius, uh, thank you for your time today. I appreciate it.